Hey guys, it's Madison Estes. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing the graphic novel Basketful of Heads, written by Joe Hill and illustrated by Leo Max. In this story, four escaped convicts are on the loose and June Branch's boyfriend has been kidnapped. So basically just another day in the Joe Hill universe. The only thing that she has to defend herself with is a magical axe that has the ability to keep people alive even after they've been decapitated. So June does what any logical person would do in that situation, and she goes around decapitating people and keeping their heads in a wicker basket. Obviously. These are all self-defense murders, but it still cracks me up that she walks around carrying these heads in a basket. Although like one of the guys in the basket says, everyone needs a hobby. June talks to these decapitated heads because all of these people are involved in a massive conspiracy and cover-up, and she's talking to them to try to get clues to figure out where her boyfriend is and how she can potentially save him. This story almost has a bizarro premise, and it definitely starts off feeling that way whenever the first head begins talking to June. This story could have easily gone in a bizarro direction, or it could have gone in a cheesy, campy direction, but Joe Hill does a really good job of keeping the story grounded and realistic by giving us a really interesting crime conspiracy that begins to unravel throughout the course of this story. Joe Hill is best known for writing horror, and this is a horror story, but I definitely think that between this story and Dying is Easy that he's shown a skill for writing crime as well. The realism of the conspiracy plot contrasts well with the absurdity of the talking heads, and I think together it creates a really nice balance. The characters in this story are a lot more memorable than the ones in Dying is Easy. June Branch is a fun and vulnerable hero who slowly morphs into a badass throughout the course of this story. She's also pretty funny, too. Early on in the comic, she tells her cop boyfriend, I'd blow you to get out of a parking ticket. It doesn't even have to be my parking ticket. Really, anyone's. And if that's not a good line to use on your boyfriend, I don't know what is. She has some other good lines, and I'm happy to say that there is a good amount of head-related pun content in this graphic novel, as well as some dark humor throughout. June's boyfriend is absent for most of the story, but you learn a little bit about him through flashbacks and her conversation with the other characters, and by the climax of the story, I was really rooting for her to be able to save him. The main villain in this story gives me the creeps, and I think that all of the antagonists in this story are interesting in their own ways. I liked how June was able to sympathize with her first attacker and his predicament of being dead not dead after she decapitates him. I liked how she was able to feel sympathy for him, but she didn't go overboard with the sympathy because that would have been annoying, especially since he did deserve to die. But I thought that it was a really human reaction for her to have sympathy for him, and it kind of, you know, made the situation feel a little bit more realistic. Also, the Viking axe kind of feels like it's a character, too. There's a story behind it, a mythos, that is hinted at, but thankfully not overexplained. It's an interesting weapon that does a great job both as a plot device and as a way to add some cool factor to the main character. So as for the plot, I'll say that there were some really great twists in this story. A few of them were obvious, and one of them had me shaking my head like, girl, are you serious? You didn't see that coming? But for the most part, they were really satisfying. Some of these twists really surprised me, especially the one at the end. I don't want to go into spoilers, but I will just say that it impressed me and it also felt like a very logical twist for the story. Now, the artwork is above average, but it is only just above average. I did really enjoy the illustrated concept art and I thought that, that was a really nice bonus. The drawings were like, okay. I felt like they really weren't that much better than what you would see in like the comic section of the newspaper, assuming they still have those newspapers, that is, but I just felt like the coloring was really uninspired. I will give it credit for using warm colors for the happier scenes and memories and contrasting that with cool colors for the present day scenes, which are mostly tense and miserable. I thought that was kind of interesting. Overall, I would give the artwork 3.5 stars. Although the artwork wasn't on the same level as the story, I still want to give this graphic novel 5 out of 5 stars. Although the art didn't impress me, it also didn't distract from the story, and I really enjoyed the heck out of this weird and fun graphic novel. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On this channel, I post reviews, writing advice, horror content, and vlogs. And I just edited a horror anthology called Roadkill 6 Texas Horror by Texas Writers. I'll include a link for this in the description box below if you want to check it out. If you like weird horror stories, you'll probably like this anthology. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you later.